Today, I'm going to give you four tips to speed up Windows 10. Stay tuned. Slow computers are a drag. Most people's first reaction to a slow computer is to buy a new one. I'm here to tell you that the majority of the time, that's not necessary. There are many things that you can do to drastically increase the performance of your system. So hold up before you throw that computer out. I'm going to give you four tips that'll help you increase the performance of your system. Also, stay tuned to the end of the video and I'm going to give you a bonus tip. One of the most common causes of slow computers is low memory. I remember back when I first started my business, it was so common to upgrade memory on slow computers that I started carrying memory in my tech bag so I could perform the upgrade on site. For Windows 10, I recommend a minimum of eight gigs. You can get by with four gigs, but it affects your performance. And this video is about making Windows 10 faster, not just getting by. So I would go with eight gigs or even 16. Memory is a cheap upgrade and it's definitely worth it. It's not difficult to upgrade the memory in your computer. The first thing you need to do is find out how much memory you currently have and how much memory your system supports. Crucial has a great memory configurator that I will link in the description below, where all you need to do is enter the manufacturer model number of your computer or motherboard, and it will tell you how much memory your system will support. Once you determine how much memory your system supports, you need to find out how much memory your system currently has. For a desktop, remove the side panel from the computer and set it down on a sturdy table. Your memory modules are gonna be long slender cards next to your CPU, pictured right here. To remove them, just move the retaining clip on the side away from the module. Some DDR4 memory modules retaining clips only move on one side. Then remove the module from the slot and the capacity of the module should be printed on it like this here. Some modules do not have the capacity printed on the module. Kingston is a good example of this. For these modules, you may have to search the model number on Google to determine the capacity of the module. For notebooks, you may have a memory door on the bottom of the notebook that you can gain access for upgrading the memory. If you don't have this access door available, you may have to disassemble the notebook in order to gain access to the memory. This doesn't necessarily mean you can't upgrade the memory, but if it's beyond your capability to disassemble your notebook, you may have to bring it to someone to have it upgraded. Another big contributor to slow computers is bloatware. Manufacturers install all kinds of bloatware on computers when they're new. Most of the software is just trial versions of software that the manufacturer is paid to pre-install on the computer. Other instances of this bloatware is manufacturer's branding that comes included with the computer. To remove this bloatware, click on the start button and just start typing control panel. Not sure why Microsoft hides the control panel in Windows 10, but it's still accessible if you search for it. From the control panel, click on uninstall a program right here. From here, look for software that includes the manufacturer of your PC's name. I wouldn't recommend removing software associated with your touchpad or other hardware. I would, however, recommend removing the included antivirus that comes with your computer. Most of the time, these antiviruses are not worth the performance loss that they cause. Windows 10 comes with a built-in antivirus that I believe does a great job. This antivirus automatically takes over if you uninstall the antivirus that you're currently using. This next tip may sound really obvious, but because of the way Windows 10 works, it's not as obvious as you might think. Windows needs to be restarted occasionally. When Windows runs for extended periods of time, it suffers from memory holes and other issues that impact performance. In previous versions of Windows, this wasn't a big deal because every time you shut down your computer, it was the equivalent of restarting. However, that's not the case with Windows 10. Windows 10 uses a hybrid startup that actually hibernates many of the system services when you shut it down. So the next time you turn your computer on, it's essentially restoring from a hibernation. Because of this, it's like the computer never really restarted. However, it does cause Windows to boot faster. To restart Windows 10, click on the Start button, then click Power and select Restart from the list. This will perform an actual restart. I would recommend doing this at least once a week. 
It is possible to disable this hybrid restart in Windows 10. The way to do this is to click on the start menu and start typing command prompt. When command prompt appears, right click on it and select run as administrator. Click yes to the user account control. When the command prompt opens, type the command powercfg-h off. This will disable hibernation so that the hybrid shutdown doesn't actually work. If you ever want to undo this, type the same command but with on at the end. The last tip, and aside from replacing your computer completely, is the most beneficial tip to increasing Windows 10 performance. That's using a solid state drive as your boot drive in Windows 10. I will not personally even build myself a new computer without a solid state drive. The prices for these drives have literally crashed in the last year, so now has never been a better time to upgrade to an SSD. Many operations on your computer require the computer to access information on your hard drive. The longer it takes for the computer to access this information, the slower your computer is going to be. As technology increases, the size of files increase as well. My first computer was a 386DX16. The hard drive was 20 megs. The average size of a photo taken on my smartphone is five megabytes. That means my first hard drive could only fit five pictures from my smartphone today. A standard hard drive uses technology that is similar to a record player. It has a spinning platter and a head that reads the data off the platter. In comparison, an SSD has no moving parts, so it reads data completely electronically. Even cheap SSDs are capable of read and write speeds that are five times faster than traditional hard drives. I recently did a video where I go step by step through the process of upgrading to an SSD without losing your data. I will link that video here in the side as well as in the description below. It's 2020, people. There's no reason why you shouldn't be using an SSD. Seriously, you will not regret it. As I said in the beginning, slow computers are a drag. What's worse is that they really don't have to be slow. There's lots of things that you can do to increase the performance of your system. Some of these tips literally cost nothing, and the other ones include a relatively small investment. Next week, I'm going to give you four more tips that you can use to increase your performance of Windows 10. In the meantime, here's the bonus tip I promised you. Many computers are capable of supporting processors that are much faster than the one you're currently using in your computer. For instance, if you're using an Athlon X2 dual-core processor, there's a high likelihood that your motherboard will support other AM3 processors. I recently upgraded my Plex server from an Athlon dual-core to an Athlon 2 quad-core. It gave that system a whole new lease on life. What's better is that I've seen those old Athlon quad cores for around $30 used online. What you need to do is find out what processor your computer currently uses and what the fastest processor your system supports is. If this video was helpful, then please like this video and subscribe to my channel. Don't forget to hit the bell icon so you can be notified of future videos. I release a new video every week. Thanks again.